This is Keep On Cooking, a podcast for people who love cookbooks and want to know more about the authors. It's also a great place to get a weekly dose of culinary inspiration to keep things pumping in the kitchen. So grab a cookbook and keep on cooking. I'm Dustin Harder, and this is Keep On Cooking. Hello, and welcome to Keep On Cooking, the only podcast dedicated to plant based cookbooks. I'm your host, Dustin Harder, and he's a limited edition snack, rare, irresistible, and definitely not for everyone. Please give it up for the man, the myth, the legend, and my husband, David Rossetti. How are you, darling? How dare you? Oh, I'm please. salty, delicious, and for everyone. I mean, hey, hey, limited edition, limited, limited edition. edition. What is that? Everyone's everybody's talking about Jamie. Correct. There we go. Correct. Has anyone seen I was that music? Send that to our listeners. That's a deep cut. If you deep know. cut. David and I saw the musical. Everybody's talking about Jamie. I think on opening night in London. No, it was right? the last preview before oh, it opening. Oh, was so night. amazing. Yeah, was we just happened to be there. I say that like we go to London all the time. It was our one trip in London, and it, we're dying to get back there. London town. We saw three great shows. What did we? Well, we saw. T- Okay. We saw uh, Dream think? Girls. That's it was phenomenal. Right. We saw incredible. everybody's talking about Jamie. And then Annie was playing, which if you yes. listen to this podcast, I'm sure we've talked about how we met, which was on the Broadway re- revival of Annie. So we saw it. But what was a little disheartening for us is that Miranda Hart, if you know her show, Miranda, you love her. Uh, she's amazing. She's incredible. She had played Miss Hannigan before we got there, like it, in the few months leading. And then we got there and there was, I'm sure he's, Famous in London and wonderful, but it's basically a female impersonator, impersonator playing yeah. uh, Miss Hannigan. And it was, it was fine. It was fine. It was fine. But like, it I was, was not like, Miranda. I want Miranda. Please. That would have been amazing. Um, also, I don't really know about that choice of putting a uh, drag queen in the role of Miss Hannigan. Like, give that to the women. Let the women play yeah, the role. Right? I, I don't love that. They're like taking my role. Drag queens are fabulous. I think drag queens have a place, but I don't think they necessarily need to play take the roles of females away. Is that, I mean, is this a hot topic? Is this controversial? No, but I think like Annie's like, so I don't know, I guess it's musical theater, but like, you know, Hairspray was, they kind of kept it like the movie. Oh, you I know, see, like, I see, so I it's see. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also kind of like an over the top character. And I mean, I uh-huh. guess Miss Hannigan's over the top, but like, I also think she's just kind of like a little bit more real than Seen, like. But I also never thought about Hairspray because it started that way. Well, yeah. It's and that's always how, been a, a drag queen playing that role. So to me, it was just created that way i don't know how interesting that you bring that anyways not not the right podcast no we're talking about but not the right podcast y'all david i'm not gonna say our podcast idea because i don't want somebody to take it i've got i've got a million podcast ideas everybody anyway today we are chatting about raw foods again i've been on a raw food kick y'all know this and not not i haven't been making it a lot but i do find it fascinating and in this book in particular the Art of Raw Desserts, 50 Standout Recipes for Plant-Based Cakes, Pastries, Pies, Cookies, and More by Crystal mm. Bonnet. Everything is in here, start to finish. It is a stunning book, and we get into the ins and outs of raw desserts. This was a really fun inter- interview to do. I really like Crystal. Yeah, uh, Crystal Bonnet is a raw food chef, instructor, and cookbook author. Um, is a plant-based and raw food nutrition program graduate of Matthew Kenny Culinary Academy and Pure Joy Academy. She's learned the importance of the culinary aspect and nutritional elements of living foods. She shares this information with her students at Crystal Dawn Culinary so that they will have as much knowledge as necessary to understand raw foods and their health benefits. Bonnet's work within the plant-based culinary industry led her on many adventures, including the development of plant-based menus for new restaurants. She designed and catered multiple health retreats in Canada and Europe before launching her raw chocolate and dessert business. Through her easy-to-follow and comprehensive classes, she shares the knowledge and skills. Uh, she shares the knowledge and skills home cooks need to incorporate healthy food. Through her easy-to-follow and comprehensive classes, she shares the knowledge and skills home cooks need to incorporate healthy food alternatives into their lifestyle. Here she is to tell us all about it. Please welcome Crystal Dawn Bonnet. Nope. Here she is to tell us all about it. Here she is to tell us all about it. Please welcome Crystal Bonnet. 
She's an international raw food chef, having created raw food offerings around the world in various restaurants, institutions, and retreats. The creator of Crystal Dawn Culinary, she makes raw food rad and tasty as can be. Please welcome to Keep On Cooking, Crystal Bonnet. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I really liked the making the raw food rad. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You got to put a little making it rad, making the raw food yeah. rad, draw it out rad. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with your icebreaker question. What is your favorite time of day and why? Yeah, I love this question. Nobody has ever asked me this. My And so I thought about it and right away what came to mind is my favorite time of day is when I get to sit down and eat a meal. Oh, because it's like my break. It's my me time. I'm not on my phone. I'm not on electronics. I don't watch TV. I like get to sit and enjoy my food. So yes. that's like my favorite time of day. It sounds like a mindful experience for you too. Like you're yeah. actually taking a moment to be present. Is there a time of day that that typically happens for you? Or is it whenever you it's can get like it in there? all over the place right now? Yeah. It's definitely my meal times are much earlier. Um, before my meal times are usually a little bit later in the day, just because being so busy. But yeah. yeah, I'm learning to nourish myself properly again. <laughs> so I hear you. I hear having you. Uh, my meal times, like my lunch, actually around lunchtime and eating earlier in the right. day. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I am morning straight up is is my favorite time. It has been now for probably the last I don't know five six years. I just love the I get up pretty early and I like the uh, just the peacefulness of a yeah. couple hours before everything the world starts rolling and like knocking things off my to do list, whether it's folding mm -hmm. laundry or catching up on something I wasn't able to do the day before or something like that. So um i'm here yeah. for the morning time <laughs> yeah my second favorite would be morning for sure yeah and maybe maybe a mindful meal in the morning as well yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> well you're here to talk about your beautiful book the art of raw desserts 50 yeah. standout recipes for plant-based cakes pastries pies cookies and more and before we dive into that let's get to know you some and how you have become the raw food expert that you are tell us when raw food came into your life and how it blossomed into the career it is for you now Yes. Okay. I'll give you the short version. So it was 2013. I was living in Edmonton, Alberta, which for those of you who don't know, um, in the U S there, it's really far North and it's very cold. It's very dry. It's meat country, beef country. Um, very, you know, lots of farmland. Um, so it was 2013 and I had already been living in Edmonton for five years and I had always been kind of interested in health and by that time I was pescatarian because I had cut out meat like for a long time, you know, red meat when I was a child. And then everything was just really progressive throughout my whole life. And I was eating a lot of processed food because I didn't cook. Like I wasn't a cook. I didn't know how mm -hmm. to cook. I didn't like cooking. I mean, um, I wouldn't even like say cut up an apple, like in the kid. I don't know. Like everything had to be like really, just really not into it. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like packaged oatmeal at work in the microwave, lots of processed food, like just stuff I could make quick and easy gluten-free toast eggs kind of thing. So I wasn't getting fruits and vegetables. I wasn't getting living nutrients, living foods. And my body just started to break down, obviously from eating that way. And, um, I was getting sick. I was working in a huge office of about 400 people. I was catching everything and I was off work mm. for almost two months straight, just being sick back to back. And I'm like something, my body is telling me something, something is wrong. I need to change something. And so I started looking online at cleanses and detoxes. I'm like, maybe I need a cleanse or a detox. I need to do something. And I just came across this raw food meal plan, this 21 day raw food meal plan. Mm -hmm. It was like 40 bucks. I could download the whole like ebook. Right. And I'm like, and I just knew I'm like, this is what my body needs. Like, this is what it's craving. This is what it's missing. And because I had such a bare kitchen, I had nothing. Like I didn't even have a blender. I don't even think I had a blender. I don't even know. Maybe like the Ninja or something. Right. I didn't have a food processor or a dehydrator. But I just knew I had to do this and I had the time off. So like I went out and I bought all the stuff and stocked up my kitchen with all the spices and the superfoods and the supplements. And I didn't get the dehydrator right away. That was kind of like the next step. But 
as I started making this food and having the smoothies and the juices and how amazing I felt. And of mm. course I went through major detox symptoms. Like I remember the third day I woke up and I was like, all I want is oatmeal. Like that's all I wanted. But I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And I just fell in love with the creativity of making the raw food because it's just so different than cooking for me. Like I just, again, was never a fan of cooking, but I loved making raw food. So that's just where it all started. That was the catalyst. I mean, I did the 21 day raw food meal plan. I stayed vegan because I lost all my appetite for seafood and eggs. Mm -hmm. And I just kept eating a high raw vegan diet. I'm not hundred percent raw depending on the season, but during the day, like 80 to 90%, depending some days, hundred percent. And, um, I just, yeah, I just kept with it and then ended up taking a ton of courses because I was so passionate about it. Started a food blog. Um, yeah. And it just all kind of spiraled from there. Well, when did you start the food blog? In 2015. So like 2015. Two okay. Years, two years after I had um, started eating this way, because I was bringing all my food to work. Yeah. And sharing it with all my coworkers. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like bars and like this and that. And I remember one of my coworkers who sat next to me, she's like, you should like put these recipes on a blog. Like, why don't you start a food blog? And she was a photographer. She's like, I bet you would really like doing food photography. And sure enough, yeah, another creative thing I fell in love with. And that's what I love doing about the blog. I got into the food photography. Yeah. And that's uh, where it all started. And then I was just taking so many courses. And then I got really into chocolate and desserts. Okay. In 20, like right after that, because I was doing a farmer's market business there for a couple of years part time okay. while I was still working. Yep. Well, and what about the Crystal Dawn Culinary? Tell everyone what Crystal Dawn Culinary is and when did that start? Yeah, so that kind of morphed from what I was doing before because I was teaching all around the world and I ended up teaching like raw chef certifications in Bali. And then I was working for an online school and in-person school in the States called Pure Joy Academy. I don't know if mm -hmm. you know Elena Love. Mm -mm. Okay, so she w w was like really big in the raw food. Okay industry one of like the ogs she was you know one of the originals and uh right. so i was working with her and um her other business associate caitlin and we were teaching um in the states and i was working with them online and um that's when i had realized i'm like shoot i need to take my i had already had my raw dessert course already done because i was teaching it in person and i'm like i really want to take this online so my whole blog and everything before was called Raw Revive, and I didn't want to keep that name. I wanted to turn it into something more, you know, changing your branding and whatever. Sure. So I came out with Crystal Dawn Culinary before I launched my raw dessert course, and that was in 2019. Okay. Uh, when Crystal Dawn Culinary was born, I launched my online business, and now it's been four and four years and a bit. That's amazing. And how many courses do you offer through Crystal Dawn Culinary now? Yeah, so it's changed a lot because sometimes I'll bring one out like for the season. Oh, then, nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I always have, so I have my um, certification courses, which are always there. So I have a raw food chef certification course. My raw dessert chef certification course, which was my flagship course, I shut that down because I'm turning it into something new and updating it. Okay. So that's what I've been working on now. Um, and then I have a... A nut free raw cake academy, which is a nut free raw oh, wow. certification course. Yeah, because I really got into um, nut free just really as a challenge. And because I was receiving so many requests mm -hmm. for nut free recipes, and I just was getting kind of uh, like bored in the kitchen, I guess, with all the raw cakes I was making. And I'm like, I'm going to create these amazing nut free raw cake recipes. So I ended up just putting that out as a course for people who wanted to offer at really like allergy friendly recipes in their business. Yeah. And um, I also have a dehydrating course that I launched in August because I'm obsessed with dehydrating because I love, I love food. dehydrating. Yeah. Yeah. I can't just live off like raw salads and fruits. Like sure. I just have been that way. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I love dehydrating. Yeah. And then I have um, a very, I have a raw food foundations masterclass, which is like, for beginners who want to dip their toes and who have never done raw food, it takes you through a whole one day raw food meal plan. Um, so that's really good for people who just want to get started. That's 27 bucks, which is a really good price. And um, 
yeah, and then I'm going to be coming out with something new soon. Nice, nice. So lots of different options for people to choose yeah. from. And uh, you mentioned the Pure Joy Academy. You're also a graduate of the Matthew Kenny Culinary Academy. And you mentioned the first book. You said you bought the forty dollar. What was it? The ebook. The was it the twenty one day challenge? You said yeah, the twenty one day raw food meal plan. Yeah. Now was there um, another book, or maybe it was that one? But what? what was like the first raw food cookbook you had where that you sort of just fell in love with raw cooking? Oh, it was the, um, Aaron Ash gorilla food, I think was the very okay. first raw food cookbook I bought. Cause he's local in Vancouver and he had a couple raw food restaurants here called gorilla food. Oh, great. Okay. So he came out with that book a long time ago. And then the second raw food book I ever bought was, um, sweetly raw by, um, by um oh i'm having a i'm having a blank here um but my friend heather heather pace there we go <laughs> i'm like trying to think of all the cookbooks in my head that I've, like, uh -huh. and i'm trying to think of the name but uh, yeah because she's local too in victoria so she nice. was like one of the um original i think raw dessert cookbooks that ever came out so yeah i bought that back in 2015 and that's when i got really into raw desserts that's great. Sweetly Raw by Heather Pace. That's the name of yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I wonder if I have it here. No. No. <laughs> I have a whole shelf of shop. cookbooks too downstairs. Like yeah. I have so many yeah. I have so many cookbooks. And when I'm really like honed in on looking for that one, it's a, it's the time I can never find it too. I'm like, right? I know it was right in that one spot. And then I'm just like losing my mind over it. Yeah. You must have so many. There's a lot. There's a lot. I cherish the collection though very much. Yeah. Uh, well, let's dive into yours. The Art of Raw Desserts, 50 standout recipes for plant-based cakes, pastries, pies, cookies, and more. First, these photos are stunning. So I, you did all of these photos. Yeah. I love taking these, these photos, photos are amazing. I flipped through the pages of this book and I'm literally like, I want to make everyone because the photos are so vibrant and the styling is so gorgeous. Like everything about these photos, it just jumps off the page. It, it looks so you. good. Yeah. Thank you so much. And it's what so, was... um, when I hear that you did all of them too, my mind is always just blown because to take on the task of creating the recipes, writing the recipes, writing the book, and then also photographing them. And in this case, raw desserts, it is a lot. So this, this book is a huge accomplishment and it's gorgeous. Yeah. Thank well, you. yes, of course. And the first section is foundations of creating raw desserts, ranging from topics like equipment and tools, ingredients, prep notes, pantry staples, processing crust and batters, blending, melting and liquefying, activating nuts and seeds, and even troubleshooting chocolate. And from the jump, you're setting people up for success with the foundational elements here. You also address that big question, what's considered raw? So tell the yeah. listeners, what's considered raw food? <laughs> Yes, I love it. And you know, the foundations, because as an instructor, it's such a big part of what I teach, right? Because you have to go through the foundations and understand all that before you really get into the recipes. So you can really understand what's going on, especially if you make a mistake. But um, yeah, so raw food is basically um, nuts, seeds, can be uh, sprouted legumes, grains, um, that uh, vegetables, fruits that haven't been heated over and above. Uh, 46 to 47 degrees Celsius. They say that after that temperature, that enzymes, the living enzymes and nutrients start getting degraded. So there's been a lot of studies done around that. So what's great about that though, is because you can do other things like dehydrating, even using a sous vide because you can control the temperature in the water bath. Like um, processing blending while keeping the temperature could by controlling the temperature. So it's not a lot of people. The big misconception is that you're just eating salads and fruits all day, but there is so many more creative things that you can do with it. Again, you're making raw breads in the dehydrator. I make donuts in the dehydrator cookies, like all of these sorts of things. I do apple pie, like in the sous vide machine. I love using the sous vide. So, um, and yeah. And then when I get into in the book, like what is considered raw, there's a lot of ingredients that are not raw used in just the education. A lot of people have no idea, for instance, that cashews are not even raw because they're heated 
they have to be boiled or steamed in order to remove the shell because they have a toxic resin on them. Otherwise, they're going to burn the workers, like removing the shells. Sure. Um, so cashews, even like a lot of nuts that come out of the U.S. So like almonds, for example, by law have to be steamed and pasteurized um, because a long time ago there was a big E. coli breakout. So they brought out this law. So if you want raw almonds, you have to get them from Europe. Sweeteners. There's no sweeteners that are raw. They're all heat treated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, lots of ingredients, like so many things. So, I mean, I'm not a purist. I mean, I love food and I love to enjoy food. And um, so I like to um, make things as comforting as possible, like within the boundaries and limits. Sure. Things as closest to nature as possible, I guess, right? Without like the least amount of processed ingredients. Sure. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's mm -hmm. it's amazing the nuances that are involved with it. It's so interesting when you talk about all that stuff. And um, you get into it in this book with the foundations too. And then our mm -hmm. next section here is the building block recipes with awesome staples, including a range of nut milks, coconut cream, activated oat flour, sprouted and dehydrated buckwheat, cultured cashew filling, coconut butter, and agar paste. Which is a building block recipe in this chapter you find you use the most in your desserts? Oh, it depends because um, like dehydrated and spreaded buckwheat, I use a lot because I just love buckwheat. It's a complete protein and it's just like so good for you and just gives the most amazing texture, especially when it's dehydrated. Um, but of course, like the plant milk is probably the most in my raw desserts um, just to add that extra creaminess. Mm -hmm. And yeah probably those two. Yeah, that makes sense. I can understand. It's I I, I kind of thought maybe it might go the, the route of the milk. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That would be one you turn to <laughs> a lot. Uh, well, now we get into it with the heavenly chocolate and truffle recipes. What's a favorite truffle recipe from, from you uh, in this chapter, for you in this chapter? Um. Oh, probably the anything to like the chocolate cherry truffles for sure are my they favorite. They suck so good. I mean, I'm just obsessed with chocolate. I have a love affair with chocolate. It's I get it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, how does chocolate work in the raw world? You have such beautiful desserts in this book that are covered in what appears to be chocolate and beautiful drips on cake <laughs> with chocolate. So how do you create that in the raw world? Yeah, chocolate is actually another ingredient that's not 100% raw because during fermentation and during the processing, it reaches well and above over the temperatures of um, 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, I'll use the Fahrenheit because most people watching this are probably in the US. <laughs> um, so chocolate is, I, okay, in the beginning, a lot of people and especially in the pastry world will say that chocolate is one of the most difficult ingredients to work with. If you are, if you don't know how to work with chocolate, it can be, which is why I go into great detail about chocolate in this book. But for me now, it's just like it's so easy. So, mm -hmm. and to make chocolate is so easy because like my chocolate recipe is just four ingredients. You have cacao paste, cacao butter, liquid sweetener, and vanilla. And I never skip the vanilla. I just think that chocolate and vanilla are married. Like they just, they have to go together. That's, I mean, to me, that's when you think of chocolate, you think of vanilla, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. And I don't understand, like if I get a chocolate bar from the store, just to try and there's no vanilla in there. It's yeah. like a tragedy. I'm like, yeah. As what? you said that, I'm like, she's not wrong. She's not wrong about that. Yeah. I'm like, how can there be no vanilla in this? But yeah. Um, yeah. And you can use it in so many different ways by, because chocolate is so scientific. I mean, as you know, you probably, there's so much science behind chocolate. There's so many textures you can create with it by adding different ingredients. Mm -hmm. Like just to a chocolate recipe, you can add liquid and you have a chocolate sauce or a ganache or a chocolate drip for a cake. Or you can add hot water and really season, thicken it up and then make it a fudge. Like that's how I do my fudge recipes, just by literally changing the consistency by adding warm or hot liquid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's just a lot of fun because there's so many different, it's just so versatile and so many different flavors you can do with chocolate. Well, speaking of versatile, some other titles in this chapter, we've got white chocolate peppermint fudge, orange hazelnut fudge. Uh, and I think these are, when you said the cherry truffles, is it the milk chocolate cherry cinnamon yeah. truffles? Oh, sounds so good. Yeah, I love La cherry and chocolate. Uh, cherry and chocolate, yes. And <laughs> lavender berry white chocolate truffles, buckwheat crunch chocolate bars with apricot jam. And that takes us into the next chapter, which is delectable cakes. Cake might be my favorite thing ever. And I'm curious which cake 
you would recommend from this book that I tackle first? Which one should a reader tackle first when they get this book? Oh, it depends on what level you are. Like for you, have you, uh, like you've done, probably done a lot of pastry, right? I, I've done some and I've done some raw desserts, but probably best to start me with the beginner just so I'm okay, safe. Okay, okay. Do you have a, you have a dehydrator? I do, yeah. Yeah, so what's really good in right now for the season two is the apple crumble caramel cheesecake. Mm. This is so good. And because just the texture of it too, like the apple is done in the, the marinated apples are done in the dehydrator and the crumble is done in the dehydrator. And then it's made with a cultured cheesecake filling. Delicious. But everything just, oh, just goes so good. And then sort of coconut whipped cream. So freaking good. I guess it's my version of like an apple crumble, but done in a cheesecake. That's great for the season. Great for the season and lots of other goodies in here. We got strawberry, vanilla cheesecake, raspberry, white chocolate cheesecake, blackberry, ginger, lime, zebra cheesecake. Uh, and then we've got the uh, mocha crisp cheesecake, tropical lime, coconut entremets. So how do you say entreme? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are those? Is there a picture um, in this book? Oh, yeah. I want to see if I know exactly it's what they are. An entremet is basically a complex, it's, you know, a French term for... It's these, a right? Complex, a complex ah, I knew it. Right when I said it, I was like, I know exactly what those yeah, are, yeah. actually. So these are fun because they're done in a different mold, and then there's a glaze over them, a white chocolate glaze. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, they just look so delicious. Even a three-layer tiramisu cake in here, everybody. Oh, yeah. so many great things. And carrot cake with orange cheesecake frosting. And this is taking us into perfect pastries and cookies. Now, I understand the cookies, and you have some great ones in here, like lemon poppy seed coconut shortbread cookies, matcha raspberry linzer cookies, and almond fig and cardamom cookie sandwiches. You even have some crepes in this chapter. Mm -hmm. And um, mango berry crepes with coconut cream. But... Where I'm at a pause here is the mocha donuts with espresso glaze. Please fill yeah. us in. How are we making raw donuts? Yeah. So, oh, I love making donuts. Um, so it's funny because usually I make my donuts with, you know, sea moss. Yes. Sea moss paste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually I make my donuts with sea moss, but I wasn't allowed to use sea the publisher wouldn't let me use sea moss in this book because I guess it was too foofy of an ingredient, right? Uh. And uh, so anyways, but there's other ingredients you can use, which is great because, um, oh, and which is why I use agar paste in this book because it's a substitute. But I it's see. a recipe to, see, I love to challenge myself with a dehydrator and come up with things mm -hmm. that actually taste cakey and not so dense. Sure. And there's lots of ingredients that you can use to lighten up raw dessert. So for instance, in the donuts, I use zucchini. Okay. Zucchini is amazing. And I even put it in cheesecake sometimes to just replace some of the fat and dressings even because it just adds bulk, but then it adds moisture at the same time. And it's so neutral in flavor, right? It literally has like no flavor if it's just eaten raw. So it's just a wonderful ingredient. So that's kind of how I get along with the psyllium husk powder. Yeah. You get this nice cakey texture um, after you've dehydrated it. But yeah, and then using things like coconut flour and almonds. Mm -hmm. Almonds are like my go-to to make almond flour because almonds are the cheapest nut that you can get, right? But And they're so neutral and just so easy to use because the texture. So it just when you put it in the food processor, you can just make a flour right away. Um, so yeah, it has like almonds, coconut flour, and all those wonderful, healthy ingredients and chocolate, of course, with the yes. glaze and the glaze is super fun. And then you can make them all pretty and decorate them. And yeah, yeah. I was like donuts. She's got donuts in here. It's amazing. Yeah, you have a, you got to make the donuts, make the donuts. I want to. And you, um, do you, how do you shape them? Do you like roll it out well, and you poke a hole or a mold? Okay, great. Perfect. Yeah, I you just get a silicone mold off of Amazon. Perfect. And then, so you mold them in the mold and then, but you can actually put the mold in the dehydrator and then yeah. after a couple hours, you take it out and then put them on the tray. I've got one somewhere. I'm like, I know I have one because I've made donuts before. I just haven't made them in a while. So I'll have to bust that out and make some, uh, yeah. some of these uh, mocha donuts with espresso glaze. I love it. Uh, well, healthier pies and tarts uh, takes us onward in a section chock full of items I feel would be super fun to share with friends and family. What's a crowd pleaser from this chapter that you know is a home run to share at a gathering from healthier pies and tarts? Oh, definitely the avocado key lime pie. 
Oh. Usually everybody loves it. It's, you know, my go-to recipe, if I'm ever doing some kind of an event, is like the, the first thing that I put on my list because usually everybody loves key lime pie. And yeah. Also, too, just uh, the way that I make it, it's so refreshing and so mm -hmm. good that it instead of having something like everyone expects, you know, like a raw cheesecake or something like that when you say raw dessert. So it's just a kind of like a breath of fresh air. But also the way I do my tart crust, like I don't use dates because I like to use ingredients that actually emulate a flaky tart crust. So they okay. are... I'm a bit crunchy and flaky at the same time, but so the textures all together, just, uh, just, it's so good. <laughs> uh, I've turned to that picture many, many times and I've been like, Oh, that looks so yeah. good. And it's such an easy recipe. So like yeah. everybody has, has never made raw desserts before, just make the avocado key lime pie. And I love making it into dessert shooters as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm here for that. There's, um, yeah. the other picture I keep pausing on is the, um, banana cream pie with gingerbread crust. Oh it yeah. It looks so good. It just looks so good. So like good, just yeah. looks very like luscious and like creamy and decadent. Like, and, it, and, yeah. And none of these look like, because it's interesting, you were talking before about how the raw desserts you've had um, that you didn't make, you know, they can be so sort of like dense or like sort of heavy. Mm -hmm. And when I look at these photos in this book, I'm not like, oh, that looks like a raw dessert. I'm like, that looks like a gorgeous cake or a gorgeous mm -hmm. tart or a gorgeous donut. Like they all look like the sort of cakes, pies, donuts, all the things I've seen before. So they just, they look outstanding in this book. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's hard not to want to make everything like truly. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. Seriously. It was hard uh, writing and testing for this book. The yeah. copious amounts of raw desserts. For, like, yeah. Oh my gosh, I bet you must have been taking it to all of your friends and neighbors and everybody. Yeah. I have like special containers that I buy just to give stuff away. I do too. I buy a bunch of meal prep containers. Yeah, I take prep it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I just, I just share it with everyone. Like a box on hand and then yep. that's what I use. Dole them out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've, I've got, my neighbors are always like, I'll take something to them. And they'll be like, well, is it vegan? And I'm like, what? I'm like, I've lived here now for like two years you know it's like that's not even a question like yeah. yes it's vegan uh well let's not forget about ice cream creamy ice cream without the dairy is the next section of the book i've got my eye on the mint chocolate chip because my husband loves mint chocolate chip and i feel this chapter might be a great starter for people when they get the book if they're just starting to get used to raw cooking and you give people the option for success with or without an ice cream maker which is mm -hmm. lovely so for someone who just picks up the book which ice cream would you tell them to make first Oh, the chocolate one. The, that honestly, that chocolate ice cream recipe. And you know, that picture, I had such a hard time with that photo for this book because that photo doesn't even do this ice cream justice. Like, isn't that I always wanted, so frustrating? So frustrating. Yeah. And I wanted to try to emulate and really it get across. So good. It looks get so across good. Crystal. The creamy texture of this ice cream um, because I use cacao paste. In this to get oh it's just yeah I mean and the ratio of of milk like I of almond milk I use two cups of almond milk to 75 grams cacao paste so it just really gives this extra creamy texture like it just I don't know just that ice cream is my absolute favorite mm -hmm. it looks so good and we've got so we've got the chocolate ice cream the mint chocolate chip ice cream vanilla bean ice cream berries and cream coconut ice cream cake berries and cream coconut ice cream cake everybody uh and chocolate chip ice cream cookie sandwiches so you've got lots of variations in there which take us yeah. to delightful slices and bars uh one of the shorter sections of the book with four recipes and they all sound incredible you've got the tiger nut tahini slice double chocolate red velvet brownie strawberry rose pistachio cream slice and the Hawaiian Sunshine Crumble Squares. Can you tell the listeners more about the Hawaiian Sunshine Crumble Squares? Yeah, so these have are obviously very tropical flavor. It's like taking you back to Hawaii with the macadamia nuts and the coconut and the mango and the pineapple. Um, kind of almost like a pina colada, but in a bar. <laughs> but Perfect. Honestly, yeah, so my that's my husband's favorite all-time favorite recipe that he's ever tried of mine. 
Um, and yeah, they're, they're amazing. So they do use young coconut meat, but young coconut meat's really easy to get in the U S because you guys get the frozen, you guys have this yeah. company called Sopra. Do you know Sopra with the frozen? No, but I've seen the frozen coconut meat before. Yeah. Because we can't even get that here in Canada. Right. Oh, so gosh. We have to, like, open them up the old fashioned way, which is fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you're a pro at it now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. I know when people are like, oh, it's too much work. And I'm like, mm, I can open up 25 coconuts and like, like I can, I have, and I will watch me. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're just, they're really good. I think they're very different for a raw dessert, which is they're very unique. Nice. Nice. Well, I love how you describe it as pina colada in a uh, square form. So, I mean, yeah. that, that's got people on board. And the book finishes out with a comprehensive section on raw frostings, ganaches, and finishing touches. What would you say is your most used frosting in this chapter? Oh, the double chocolate frosting. Yeah. Just because, yeah, that's like my all time favorite frosting, just because the way that it holds up and it just pipes so well, not that the other ones don't, but it's just, I think it's the easiest to work with. And that one was just came about as a mistake. Don't you love those? Uh, Absolutely. Mistakes? The happy yeah. mistakes. Yes. Yeah. So that frosting, I was trying to make a cookies and cream frosting and I added okay. pound ends, but then I blended it too long. And then I'm like, oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. So I just kept blending it. So just kept blending it and see what would happen in the Vitamix. And just the cacao nibs added this extra cacao flavor, but also the cacao butter from the cacao nibs just made the frosting so stable. But usually it's funny because usually you can't use coconut oil and cacao butter together in a frosting because it'll go grainy. But for some reason, again, because chocolate is so scientific mm. in this one recipe, it works and it just is the smoothest. Yeah. Easiest to work with. Frosting. How funny. I know. I don't know. Just like, but in a vanilla frosting, if, cause that one also has coconut oil in my cashew based vanilla frosting, if I add cacao butter, even just a little bit, even when, when the temperature changes, when I bring it out of the fridge and I want to frost with it, it goes grainy. Yeah. It just does. Like they, the oil and the butter just separate. It doesn't work. Huh. But for some reason in this chocolate frosting, it works. So well, look at that. A happy accident. We'll take it. We'll take yeah, it. Yeah. Well, that's one of your most used frostings in the chapter. What's a favorite frosting from the chapter? Oh, the coconut frosting. Coconut? Okay. Yeah, I just love coconut. But I that's, you know, when I have the energy to go get find coconuts and open them. Yeah. That one has the young coconut meat. <laughs> Is it pretty easy for you to find the actual coconuts? Not anymore. No. Yeah. They're very expensive, so I don't use them that often anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't really fair. use them. Plus, because where I live, I'm not right in Vancouver, so there's no Asian supermarkets around me. Got it. Yeah. So there is not really, I can't really go anywhere to get them cheap. But if I want them, I have to go to the organic store and it's like $8 for a young coconut. Yeah. Gives you maybe like a quarter cup of young coconut meat, depending on the coconuts. Right, right. So it's just, yeah, not worth it for me. But I hear yeah, that. I the States has all the best stuff. I'm like, I have to move to the States just so I can get <laughs> <the> frozen <laughs> coconut meat. Well, I mean, you know, and we're we're getting it from who knows where, it's coming in from all different directions. From and Thailand, yeah. Yeah, but free, freezing it, though, I guess, is I'm yeah. surprised you're not able to get it frozen anywhere. Not at all. No, there's huh? just no company that provides it here, and I don't know why they haven't expanded. I've talked to them many times about it because, like, my students, this is, like, the number one um, – source that I give my students for frozen coconut meat. Yeah. I know the company really well, but there's, there's just, I don't know, Canada, I don't know. It's just so many regulations. Sure. And like, sure. It's just so much more expensive to bring everything in here. And it's just, yeah. So yeah. When, when I was in Thailand last January, I was on Koh Samui and we'd go for 10 kilometer hikes every morning and the amount of coconuts, right? That's they just amazing. can't keep up with the amount of coconuts. Yeah. I mean, and they're just wow. falling everywhere. So you're just walking down the street and they're just everywhere. And I'm like, oh God, I like wish I could just like fill up my suitcase with I know, all right? these freaking coconuts and bring them home. I'm like, I was thinking, I was it? like, did you try to steal coconuts? Yeah, like <laughs> I wish, but I would have a coconut water every like fresh coconut. Oh my coconut. goodness. 
Yeah, of course you'd have to. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Well, that's uh, raw frostings, ganaches, and finishing touches. That's the finishing touch on the book. So that is the art of raw desserts, 50 standout recipes for plant-based cakes, pastries, pies, cookies, and more. Now I have to ask you, what's your book brag for this book? Something that you're most proud of when it comes to this book. Oh dear. Yeah, that was a hard question. <laughs> Um, there's so many things that I'm so proud of with this book. Um, I think the amount of technical knowledge in here, I think I'm most proud of, um, just because this is what I really wanted to convey in the book, just to bring people the education behind the ingredients and mm -hmm. behind um, making raw desserts. And then second to that would be the photos. Probably. Oh. <laughs> So good. So good. Start yeah. to finish so many great photos, including tutorial for the photos. I know people love to have those and you've, you've got uh, a few recipes in here where you really walk people through the steps of putting it all together, which I think is mm -hmm. so helpful. Um, and then all the knowledge behind the ingredients. It's, it's so true. Oh, this beautiful photo. What is this? Seriously. Every time I go through this white chocolate peppermint fudge, just oh, hold yeah. it up. So it's good. so gorgeous. So gorgeous. You must have just a booming prop closet now of food styling stuff. Well, I would my imagine. whole kitchen yeah. uh, <laughs> is like, it, there's no dining room table even in there. It's just like my studio. Yep. So I have like wire racks of all my equipment and then, you know, of all of the food photography stuff. But the food photography stuff was fun because when I had got this book deal, I upgraded the camera that I had for food photography and I took a course on artificial lighting okay. so that I could take photos whenever I wanted any time of the day. Right. Um, and then I really just upped my game. So I, this book made me a way better food photographer, sure. just everything better recipe developer, recipe writer, because I was so used to teaching on video. Then when you're, writing a recipe in a book and people don't have that luxury of watching the video on how to do it. It's a whole different ball game because you have to really go into it in their shoes. Like this person has never made this recipe before. Yeah. What information do you have to give them in order for them to be successful? Yep. Well, yeah, it just made me a better like overall like chef and just everything. I love that. That's great. That's yeah. a great, great book brag all around. Just all around yeah. betterment, essentially. Yeah. So, yeah. Very <laughs> good. Maybe you're a better person. Yes. Well, are you ready for your round of rapid fire questions? Sure. All right. What's your favorite kitchen tool? Dehydrator. Favorite raw food ingredient? Ooh, such a hard one. Sunflower lecithin powder. Ah. Uh, <laughs> what topic could you give a 20 minute presentation on that's not raw food? Oh, spirituality. Nice. And uh, what's your favorite way to waste time online? Watching YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, favorite raw food restaurant? Oh, Seeds of Life in Bali. Okay. And how well do you know your neighbors? Oh, I know them pretty good. Like. Okay. Yeah, actually, I have like lots of friends in our townhouse complex. And... Oh, nice, good, okay, yeah. great. So yeah, they I'm know vegan. you're a raw chef, unlike my neighbors who are like, "Is it vegan?" <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. yeah. I have a girlfriend who lives just literally almost kitty corner, and she's really gotten into health. Since awesome. I moved here, so her and I connected on that. And she's now she's like maybe ninety percent vegan, and she just bought a juicer, and she's like going all in. And so I just love seeing that and loving that. Up. Yeah, that's great. Uh, hot sauce or barbecue sauce? Hot sauce. And what's your favorite summer activity? Kayaking. Oh, very good. Uh, do you have a song you like to sing at karaoke? No, I will no. not sing at karaoke. <laughs> that's also an acceptable answer. And yeah. uh, do you, what's that? I said, nobody wants to hear me say that. <laughs> uh, do you have or have you ever had a nickname? Yeah, when I was young, because my younger sister couldn't pronounce my name properly, Crystal, so she would call me Kiko. Okay. So my family would call me that. There you go. When I, we were growing up. Mm -hmm. And would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to speak to animals? I'll be able to speak to animals. Yeah, I think I'd pick that too. <laughs> well done. That's your rapid fire. You did it. Thank you.
Yeah. Well, listen, where can everyone find you on social media and the internet, please? Everything is under my business name, Crystal Dawn Culinary. So crystaldawnculinary.com. All of my handles are Crystal Dawn Culinary. So if you just Google that, you'll find everything or just get everything on my website because I have links for everything there. Perfect. Um, yeah. Perfect. Easy breezy, one shot, Crystal Dawn Culinary. And everyone go out and buy your copy of The Art of Raw Desserts, 50 standout recipes for plant-based cakes, pastries, pies, cookies, and more everywhere books are sold. And get started on your path to crafting delectable raw cakes, perfect raw pies, and heavenly raw chocolates, truffles, and more. This book is a stunner start to finish. Crystal, thank you so much for being a guest and sharing your knowledge about raw desserts with us today. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun and it was so good to connect with you. This has been a Muzzy Cat production. <laughs>